Hello and welcome back to XYZ. We will continue this tutorial series and look at the creation of the audio visualizer I named Plexus 2. We are now in part 4 of this tutorial series and if you haven't watched the previous ones yet, you will find a link in the description below. There you will also find some useful things about Blender in animation notes, as well as the audio file I'll be using in this tutorial. This time we will look at some mesh generation in animation nodes itself and then use these generated meshes for a volume intersection with a particle emitter to define the style of this visualizer. So let's get started. So for this tutorial we'll head over to the video sequencer and add a sound file. I'll be reducing the volume again so it doesn't disturb in the recording. Then we head over to animation notes, create a new note graph, get in the timeline, and let's start out with a sound spectrum node. Get our mp3 file in here and add a time info node. And what I would do for this visualizer is uh, loop through the spectrum values and use these values to generate some meshes out of them. So for that we get in a loop. We're going to use the float list for the spectrum and an object list to get our created objects into. So let's invoke our subprogram, get in the spectrum. We're going to use the object output node to generate a new target object. And we're going to uh, create a solidify modifier. The mode should be simple, the offset set to zero, and for the thickness I'm going with a value of one. And we're gonna instance this object, and we're gonna use the spectrum list as the driving factor for our instances. And we're gonna reduce the count to 10 for now. And let's activate the full object copy and deep copy. And we link that into our loop. We can link up the object, activate the mesh output. And let's go into the generator section and get the circle mesh node. We don't want to merge the start and end. And we want to drive the outer radius with our spectrum value. And there is already something happening. And let's, I'm, I will be increasing the amplitude to offset the reduced volume on my end. And now we're going to do some math to get the end angle for every of our pi meshes. So for that, we're going to bring in a constant node. 
since uh, these angle values are based on radians and not degrees, we can use pi. If we put pi in here, we see we get a perfect half circle. So we are going to use a math node as well. And we are going to divide the iterations by two. And then we're gonna divide pi by our fraction. This should give us the value for our end angle. We still need uh, to rotate our pi meshes and for that we're gonna head away into the mesh section and use the transform mesh node. We're gonna compose a matrix. We're only interested in the rotation and we can use our constant pi node again but this time we're gonna go with two pi since we need a full circle. And we're going to divide pi by our iteration and then multiply it by the index. We still need to create a Euler out of this value and we're only interested in the C rotation. Leave the use degree unchecked since we are using radians in our calculation and with that we have a full circle of pi meshes. We'll be using these meshes for some volume intersections later and for that we still need an output from our loop which will be a mesh list so we're not outputting the objects itself but only the meshes and we need to get a mesh input node grab the object Tick on use modifier since there are modifiers on these objects that we also want to grab and output as a mesh. And let's get the loop out of the way. And we will continue by bringing in an, a particle emitter that we will use to intersect and we use the particle location to then generate the visualizer out of. So let's hide this for now. And for our emitter, I will be using a cylinder. I'm deleting the sides and the bottom portion. Let's bring this down into the center of the scene and I will be 
in setting this and delete the center portion as well. And we'll make this a lot bigger. And we can adjust that later on anyway. Make it a bit smaller. Get a particle system on there. The start and end frame will be the same. The lifetime should be however long your animation is going to be. And we don't want any gravity. And we don't want any velocity. So we are using the particle emitter just to get some random points into the scene that we can use for our visualizer. So we will be heading into the particle system section and get in the from object node and get the particle emitter. Then we'll be getting the particle data. And we will be using the construct bvh tree node. For that we need a single mesh and we have a mesh list right here which we will combine into a single mesh. Animation node will drop in the node automatically. And also in the BVH3 section we have an is inside volume node that we can use the BVH3 and the particle positions to get a boolean value and in the boolean value we can use a mask list node drop the boolean list into the mask and our vertex or particle locations into the list input and with that we get a vector list with only the particles that are intersecting with our uh, pi our pi meshes what i would also like to do still is drop an map range node in here so we can have a bit more control over our pi of the spectrum pi meshes and we can adjust them Let's rename our emitter. 
and let's scale the emitter a little bit up so our pie meshes are most of the time inside of the size of the emitter. And then we're going to hide it. And we're heading into the mesh section operators find close points. We can bump up the amount a bit. And now we can use the edge indices to generate splines out of. So we get the particle locations and then our generated edges. And let's hide our spectrum pi meshes and the splines we want to output into an object. Let's activate the bevel depth. And we'll rename that. And with that, we already have a visualizer going on that we can actually render out. But we want to continue and have some shader effects that are driven by vertex colors. And that will need some more node setup to accomplish. And uh, what I would also like to do is uh, just uh, the ready of our splines. So there's a bit of randomization going on. And I bring in a random number node and set it to a list. And we can use our uh, particle position or better even the edge count to get the right amount of numbers and let's adjust the value and with that we get something a bit more interesting Let's bring in a visibility output node so that we can adjust the visibility of our uh, curve object. Since we will create a mesh out of the curve object and we won't need the curve object visible later on. So we can control that very easily. So next we'll generate our vertex colors and for that we're gonna use another loop. And as inputs we'll be using a float list which will be the spectrum. Then we want a mesh list. Which will be the spectrum pi meshes. And as parameters, we also want to have a mesh. And this one will be our visualizer mesh. And we also want to have 
to float lists. This will be used later on and will become more clear what they are used for. So let's invoke our sub program. We want to bring in a mesh input node. Then we're going to use the spectrum and then we're going to use the spectrum pi meshes that we generated in our first loop. And the two float lists will stay empty and we actually select our loop input head over into the items section and under advanced node settings we can disable the input which gets rid of the input so the empty float lists will only be visible inside the loop itself which is exactly what we want and we're gonna hit the re reassign button and we're gonna use both of these and reassign the values later on. So we wanna uh, do another BVH tree intersection and use the is inside volume node. So we create we construct a BVH tree out of the spectrum pi meshes. And let's head over into the node tree settings and disable the uh, auto execution and set it to only when some properties and the tree changes. Because Blender is going to get more sluggish as we move through this loop. And we're going to use uh, the vertex position of the visualizer mesh as the vectors. So we're gonna need a mesh info node and we can disable all of the outputs except the vertex locations. And now I would like to loop through this Boolean list. So we create another loop inside of our loop. And this will generate us our, our color lists that we generate our vertex colors out of. So we're going to use the boolean list. And we're going to have two float parameters. One will be the spectrum. And the other will be called pi count. Let's make sure both of these are actual floats and not float lists. <laughs> 
and the pi count value we're gonna use some math to get that so i'll be adding one to the index then i will use one and divide it by the amount of iterations and then i'm gonna multiply both values and use that as the input so this will generate a value between zero and one no matter how many spectrum points we generate in the beginning this will always adjust and give us the right value for our vertex colors later and in our second loop we'll use in the boolean section a switch and whenever the condition is true i want to use the spectrum and otherwise leave it at zero and we're going to do the same for our pi count and then output a float list for both of them i'm going to rename that So one goes into the vertex color red channel and the other into the green channel. But first we have to reassign some values. And we're gonna use a math node. And we're gonna add the newly generated values are added to our empty list. And then we reassign the list. So every time an iteration of the loop is finished the list the new generated values will be added to the list and in the next iteration those values will stay and there are new values added until the whole loop finishes and we're gonna do the same for the second list. Then we want to generate color out of it. So this goes into the red channel, second one in the green channel. And since the red channel is based on the spectrum which is not in the zero and one range we have to do a map range node and we can bring in a list math node and set it to max which gets the max value out of the list and we use that to input into the input max and with that it should always return a value between zero and one which is perfect for our vertex colors and the next node will be the inset vertex color layer we bring in our color and we're gonna use the visualizer mesh and set it to vertex and we output this mesh into a list <laughs> 
with our mesh list that comes out of the loop, we're going to only grab the last one. Since this is the one where the vertex colors will be finally complete. And then we're gonna output it into an object so we can actually render it. And let's get rid of our spline object so they're not both of them visible. And let's see how our vertex colors are looking. We're heading over into the shader editor. Create a new material. And the second color isn't as visible as I would like. So let's adjust some values. Let's see our emitter and make the center portion maybe a little bit smaller. Let's adjust the map range node. And we see that the values are blended based on the height of the spectrum value. And let's look at the green channel. And this one will generate uh, black to white values in a radial fashion. So you can shade your visualizer. In a radial fashion, like it is seen here. So what I would like to implement is a way to fade in and fade out the visualizer globally. It can be done by adjusting the particle settings and using the particle emission to do that, but I'd 
like to have a second and a different option. And for that, we bring in an offset polygon node. And we're only interested in the scale. And scale it to zero. And I want to control the fall off based on an object controller. I'm going to set it to radial. And I will create an empty object. And this empty object will be the controller for the fade effect. And I will bring in an interpolation from curve node. I will adjust the clipping and bring it up to full value and then duplicate it. and bring both points down to zero. And I want to mix them both together. Let's set it to chain. And by adjusting the position value, we can now fade in and fade out our visualizer radial. And we can bring in an evaluate fall off node to control the position with a slider. And we can even invert this fall off, which would make more sense since at one you would expect the visualizer to be visible, and at zero it's invisible. And we can also adjust where the fade starts by adjusting the face. We can rotate so this value will need something between zero and one or one it starts where it was at zero so every full value is a full rotation so at two it's at the same location at three again so we need something that generates a value between zero and one and i would like to use the actual control object and for that we we'll bring in a transform input node and we want to separate the yielder use degree and we are only interested in the c rotation and we're gonna do some math with that So I'm going to set this to absolute, which makes it a positive value, no matter if the object controller is rotated uh, in the negative direction or the positive direction, it will always be positive. Then I'm going to duplicate that and divide it by 360 degrees. <laughs> 
when I rotate and execute the node tree, it will follow our control object. And we have to execute the node tree since uh, we don't have the always execution checked. Since this would make Blender really sluggish and the control object isn't something that will trigger the execution of animation node in this case. So we have to do a manual execution. So there is one more thing I haven't talked about yet, and that is rendering. Since in some cases, uh, Blender and animation nodes don't play very well together, and it can happen that Blender is crashing when rendering. In this case, I am using a Python script that helps me get around this issue. And I'd like to append that real quick. And here is the Python script. We need uh, the name of the node tree. We copy that over and copy it right here. So the script knows uh, which node tree should be executed before the frame is rendered in the next line. And we switch off the auto execution in animation nodes. And uh, this Python script for whatever reason doesn't render the last frame so either you render that out manually after the animation has finished rendering or we just increase the end frame by one. And let's also make sure you have set up all your rendering settings and specified an output directory before going in and hitting the run script button in the text editor because with with that uh blender starts rendering and becomes unresponsive until the render is completely finished there is no other way to cancel the render other than shutting down blender completely so make sure to save before hitting the render button. And you can track your render progress by going into the output directory and seeing the frames pop in. There will be a download link for the Python script in the description below. And with that, we reached the end of this tutorial. I hope you had fun following along and recreating this visualizer. Until next time and happy blending. No, there ain't no stopping us. Fly without boarding pass. Couldn't catch me, I'll be moving fast. Call me a shooting star. Let them know you